comes to mind when you think about outdoor recreation education in the Sea to Sky region? Some of you may have sought out places like this. However, your experience may actually have looked more like this. Increasing popularity of the Sea to Sky as a tourist destination, an outdoor recreation capital, and the associated impacts, such as overcrowding, environmental degradation, and safety concerns, among others, are commonly experienced throughout the region and bring a complex set of challenges. This is Cyril and Merjan and I'm Brittany, and together we have developed the BC Outdoor Recreation Decision-Making Framework. The Ministry of Forests is tasked with managing provincial crown land across BC, including the Sea to Sky, and is faced with considerable challenges related to multiple land use interests involving governments, stakeholders, advocacy groups, tourism, and the natural resource sector. This has spurred the need to develop a targeted strategy that enables robust, defensible, proactive decisions, all within reconciliation. The aim of the strategy is to ensure that the sea to sky can continue to be enjoyed by all, and balance competing land uses while mitigating negative impacts, all without compromising sustainability of outdoor recreation in the Sea of Sky. We have developed a BC-specific framework based off of the Visitor Use Management Framework from the US. This American framework is designed to meet similar needs and builds on previous expertise. We adapted this to integrate our principles, which meant altering its content and structure. The bulk of the content changes were to include First Nations rights and title, as well as aspirations and interests. To ensure defensible decisions, we incorporated BC-specific terminology, as well as uh, prompts for further research at key areas. Finally, we fine-tune the structure to ensure that it is clear, user-friendly, and results in consistent decisions. In order to do this, we undertook extensive research, consulted with a wide range of stakeholders, and conducted a rigorous testing workshop of our BC framework with the Ministry of Forests. From this, we have created the BC Outdoor Recreation Decision-Making Framework. This framework is made up of two components, the Complexity Rating System, or CRS, and the elements. The CRS is done first, and this is to allow uh, managers to more accurately allocate time, money, and resources to their decision by first rating the complexity and uncertainty of their decision. Next, the elements of the framework organize its contents into four sections. In element one, the manager explores the decision at hand and the need for it. In element two, ideal conditions are identified. Next, in element three, a plan is made to reach these ideal conditions. Finally, element four includes monitoring, or sorry, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of the management decision. As the decision-making process is iterative, the CRS is integrated throughout the body of the framework at areas where uncertainty or complexity can be changed or can help determine uh, the course of action. So the framework that we developed is an important first step towards effectively managing recreation use on provincial crown land in BC. But on its own, it's not gonna be enough. The Ministry needs to first develop an overall management strategy that establishes desired conditions and reflects a vision shared by local First Nations, neighboring communities, and key stakeholders. With a management strategy in place, sub-area management plans will be able to implement and set in motion the goals established in the strategy. Next, application guidelines the result in the ministry spending less time ushering applicants over the approval threshold will shift the responsibility to the proponents, allowing the ministry to reach quicker decisions. Alongside this suite of tools, the framework that we've developed will allow the ministry to make the robust, defensible, and proactive decisions that they see, while remaining grounded in reconciliation. Without these tools, the many natural and cultural assets that make BC the world-class outdoor destination that it is 
will be threatened, and our ability to enjoy them will potentially be lost. 